guys, it's me Fox. Welcome into another episode of Epic CNC Upgrade where I'm gonna be showing you my journey which I took to upgrade the CNC. All the you know reasoning behind the design, um, all the swearing and squaring. Um, I hope I explain the stuff well enough uh, and I hope you're gonna find some bits and pieces useful for you. So the journey begins. Okay, so as you can see, I cleaned it up, removed all of the covers, and now I'm gonna start disassembling it. Here I have a, a rail, so you can compare. That one will go on that side. So yeah, that's the, the difference. The machine will be much higher, so I think I will have to cut the ceiling and I don't know, extend it. I think I'm gonna cut that box like beyond reason uh, because I have to cut the, the right side, I have to cut the left side so I have access to install my uh, ball screws. Um, yeah, shush. Oh well, eventually I will get it done, I think. So maybe I should get the, the machine a bit closer. It's the last time when the Z-axis was used. Ouch. Wow, that thing was tiny and so much space. I forget how tiny it was. Oh, wow. The plate was pretty thick. Definitely. No cutouts. Oh, yeah, because the bolt screw was uh, microscopic. Now I'm kind of curious how it looks uh, the cheap wise and stuff. So the bolt screw is clean. There is not much chips inside anyway, and that adapter here, which I made, you know, without the CNC, it's uh, yeah, looks looks pretty amazing, I have to say. Mm. Yeah, it's like I'm surprised uh, how well it was performing. Looking at it, you know, with a fresh eye after a couple of years, the Z axis is out. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, it's uh, truly horrible. That one is the, the, the least worst. That's, yeah, I'm really surprised how well it worked considering how worn or, I don't know, damaged those things are. It's kind of funny to see how flimsy it is you know like that thin screw that's why uh, now I will be using this one so as you can see that's the considerable upgrade and that one doesn't seems to be moving much that's why in my opinion uh, you shouldn't be using uh, size 16 at all in uh, CNC machines even the wooden ones really uh, that's too much flex go to like 20 I think 20 for CNC is the minimum really on that length on the, on the meter maybe on something shorter like the Z 16 is fine but for a meter nah now I'm gonna uh, try to take the gantry out I hope my back won't break yeah, it's ugly. <laughs> uh, what the? F Is it the joke or something? The ball screws are attached. 
Take two. Uh, after the first one, my back is still kind of killing me. Let, let, let's see. Motherfucker, it's heavy. Especially at this position. Oh, it's my name on it. Now I will do some of uh, woodworking. I'll be cutting a hole around that plate to fit new Y-axis uh, modules. So watch this space. Okay, so my first thing which I want to do is to drill the holes for uh, y-axis uh, assembly so i have four clamps one clamp pulling it to the wall um, the other one to the wall and that clamp is clamping uh, parallels so it's uh, flush with the with the top and i wanted to do it now because if i'm gonna reinstall the rails i won't know exactly where is the top i mean i, I guess i will know but it will be much harder to to keep it in place now to access this thing from there i have to cut a big opening so i can deal with the stuff in there so i'm just gonna get the you know circular saw and cut it hello that's how it looks on the other side so here i have my two mounting points and they're you know they have like uh, 15 millimeters left of the granite here I'm like uh, 50 millimeters uh, to that mounting hole here and that one uh, unfortunately is on the edge of the granite and I think it will just need uh, really a uh, four bolts you know, always if it's not fine, I can remove that screw and drill through. That should be fine. But yeah, like those are M8s. Should be more than enough, really. I got myself a new drill. Uh, and I'm going to be testing it. Uh, carbide, four flute. Um, German. Yeah, we'll see how it will perform but uh, i don't have much like a uh, high hopes for it because um, the best one is the diamond uh, hollow bits and when you drill with that thing it's it's really amazing it just it goes through the granite like for the butter um, and those ones are not so great because it's just i don't know it just doesn't cut it I try to just find the center more or less. I took the Y axis uh, bolt screws off, and as you can see here, uh, yeah. It did something here like just barely any uh, so I'm gonna switch to my uh, ceramic uh, drill that one is a bit worn the best is when they are run uh, wet because uh, if you run them dry you might burn them down That one is definitely a bit uh, dull.
And after some time, I have a hole which is that deep. So it's uh, 45 millimeters, almost through. And uh, I've been thinking if I should use uh, concrete anchors or I should just go straight a made threaded rod and put the epoxy inside and that's it and the nut on the back and I think that will be the way I'll go because it's uh, definitely I think the strongest I don't think I have to go for very weird stuff I don't have to drill through because there are no forces working that way just you know for front and back and that that should do it. Just gonna clean it up with this uh, big drill. Okay, so I drilled uh, four holes. Yeah, drilling by hand um, vertically, it's not the easiest thing to do. Mm. So the hole placement wasn't uh, terribly ideal. And this time I'm gonna be using a fissure for anchoring. And now I'm putting it uh, almost five centimeters down. So there is no way to be pulled. I haven't got the um, the gun with it, so I'm gonna be mixing by uh, by hand. The consistency it's uh, quite amazing, I have to say. It's very liquid. Um, I like it because it means that it will flow well in the hole. Looks like it's mixed. Okay, and now I'm gonna get the syringe. I have the insulin syringe with me because uh, here in New Zealand it's really hard to get any syringe. I get five millimeters or whatever it is. Half a milliliter, Jesus, that's really small. I'm gonna put it in, squirt. I guess I will have to get another one. Wipe it off. So my uh, y-axis uh, bolt screw won't get uh, glued. At least not too much. Okay. To put my parallel here because that side is a bit lower so parallel on the top so I will be able to adjust okay it looks like it's a uh, you know, all of them are have some play. Not much, but some. That's good. Anyway, I kind of think that they will have to drill bigger holes if I want to, you know, um, adjust it uh, slightly more. Unfortunately, I had a small mishap with quite a few videos I have recorded. I suspect I deleted them. I thought I downloaded them, but I haven't. It was so many clips that, uh, yeah, I lost a few. In total, I drilled over two meters of granite. Those were some El Chipos, which I found in the store, and they gave up 
quite quick and this what I really recommend are the Bosch diamond drills they are really amazing this is a highly speeded up time lapse of me drilling holes in the granite I had to clamp the drill to the table so I can you know put some force on it the force necessary to drill holes with the crappy ones it was around 40-50 uh, kilograms and the speed shouldn't be higher than 1000 rpms if you go higher than 1000 rpms you're gonna burn the diamond so that's how it looks uh, after drilling all the holes now you're gonna be putting uh, threaded rods so I have to clean it, blow the holes, uh, dry it and install the rods I put all of the inserts and now we're gonna scrape uh, the excess around I don't really want the rail to be glued I still want to have a uh, possibility of uh, adjusting it and if I leave uh, the residue around that might uh, kind of disturb the alignment and then it might not be flat anymore So I will give it a wipe with acetone Um, so now we're gonna put the rail on uh, the rail has the recess in the middle so it's not that bad if there is some left around the pins put it in okay fit the spacer around the the bolt maybe I will tap it down so it sits always the same flush with the bottom so it's in now I'm gonna roughly align with this line okay so I will leave it uh, to cure and be back all the threaded rods are in left and right so that's how it's gonna look I give it a day to cure while I've been editing the video now I can take it off Here I have my uh, spacers, so I can take them off as well. Okay, I think now I'm gonna start mounting those rails on. I will uh, clean them up, uh, stone them, maybe clean here a bit and check if it's uh, still uh, flat and parallel to the table. Let's see okay i'm trying to set the first rail straight and that's my setup to explain you better why it's so weird it has to be straight this way straight that way and it also has to be leveled uh, <laughs> because it's a, such a heavy rail it has to be perfectly level with the other rail so that's why I have the style indicator and the straight edge pretty much on the same level. So when I put the dial indicator here and there is uh, any um, tilt on the carriage, I'm going to see it here.
So it took me only a freaking day of massaging. And I have this rail straight with then uh, 4 microns. At the biggest spot, usually it's around uh, T3. Uh oh, I guess I have to show you that. Yep, all the way up. And now I'm gonna check if uh, the height haven't changed. The needle is jumping because of the balls in the carriages are jumping for the plastic guide. So that's why it's a bit jumpy, but yeah, it doesn't go more than half. I'm gonna refocus that thing so you can see a bit better. So let me think now. I think I'm quite happy with it. You know, five microns more than enough. And I guess uh, when I'm gonna combine those two carriages, it should be even less because the error will be averaging over the longer distance. I guess I could say I'm happy. Just freaking exhausted. So my enthusiasm is a bit down. But uh, yeah. Um, so now I have to set the uh, ball screw to run through with the rail. It's much easier because I have uh, just those uh, four screws, which is actually two points of contact really, front and the back, so how hard the fuck it can be. I mean, obviously it's not as simple as it might seem like, but uh, yeah, because you still have like up, down, and wiggle that way. So that might take a bit of time, but uh, I'm assuming that's going to be way less time than I spent trying to make that thing uh, straight, flat and without the uh, wobble. I think that's going to be enough for this video. Uh, in the next video I'm going to be showing you more of the Y-axis setup and maybe I can fit some of the gantry. Yeah, they're going to be some interesting stuff I guess how you should uh, set the uh, rail straight and so on so if you have any questions uh, please add them into the comment below uh, before I'm done with the series so I can you know include them into the future videos thanks for watching see you next time